Well, today is January 1st, 2021. You know, last night I heard a lot of gunshots and a lot of fireworks and a few that didn't go all that loud and a few that was pretty loud and I was just sort of thinking, I was standing outside sort of watching. Normally we would be in watch night tonight, but I didn't know of any watch nights going on. But I come out here and I opened up my Bible and I just sort of asked the Lord what today holds you know we a lot of us i say we a lot of us make new year's resolutions and generally we break them before the end of the first day and i was looking at a scripture and i just thought i would use it for my own self Maybe not so much as a New Year's resolution, but I do need to work on things. Um, I definitely do need to work on some stuff. And this verse here talks sort of to me. I can't really think of anyone else that this verse applies to but me. I'm in the book of Titus chapter 1. In verse 7, and verse 7 talks about a bishop. Well, we know a bishop is a lot like the preacher or a pastor. Well, I don't claim to be a pastor. I don't claim to be a preacher. And I surely don't claim to be a bishop. Um, I like the, the other word that it says down here. As a steward of God, a steward is someone that follows somebody that opens up the Bible and begins to seek out and look for things that they need to do for themselves. A steward is like a good steward. It's almost sort of like a farm caretaker. You know, the person that can own the farm, and then you have a caretaker of the farm that helps run the farm. His job is to run things. And that's sort of like a steward, you know, and he uses this man, Paul, is using this word as the steward of God. And then he goes on to say, not self-willed. You know, I need to work on that. You know, it's not about myself. It's not about my will. It's really all about his will and being self-willed according to his plan. But there's a word here that says not self-willed. A self-willed person is not going to be willed to the Heavenly Father. A self-willed person is not going to care too much about what God thinks. They're going to only do what their their will is, their self is wanting to do. And that's what it's really all about. Uh, Not soon angry. You know, I don't generally, honestly, I don't generally get angry. The Bible says in one place, and I don't know where it says it, but the Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. I think that the Lord allows a person to get weighted down and loaded down with maybe a little bit of anger. But a lot of times it's how we deal with the anger. So, yes, could this be like a resolution of starting out the first day of 2021 to be able to read this verse right here where it talks about being a steward of God 
not self-willed, not soon angry. You know, it's amazing that Paul used the word soon there. If you're angry and you're quick to be angry, that's a bad, that's a bad thing. He doesn't want you to be soon angry. See, if you're soon angry, that means you're not really in the will of God. So that's what it's saying here. Not given to wine. I've never had a drinking problem. And I'll tell you why I never had a drinking problem. I never desired it. Uh, I was brought up in a Christian home where I never had that problem. I never had an issue with a wine alcoholic problem. Mama always said if you don't never start nothing, you don't never have nothing to quit. And I never started with any kind of booze or alcohol. And it says not given to wine. Um, you know, when you settle for the cares of the world, the wine could be anything worldly. It's talking about wine, but it's also talking about worldly things, and worldly things tend to affect people. And, you know, even though I don't have a wine problem, um, you can still allow fleshly things to take you away from the will of the Lord. It might not have nothing to do with alcohol, but what if it's something else that it has to do with? Wrong is still wrong in the eyes of God. No striker. I didn't ever really look that up. I don't know if that means not to be a striker when it comes to hitting someone or a striker of another type. But he doesn't want me, to me, that's sort of like a person that is lashing out in anger. And he t tells us right here, no striker. Not given to filthy lucre money. You know, God never said money was wrong. The only thing the Bible says that's wrong about money is the love of money. There's nothing wrong with having enough success to feel like you can pay your bills and have a little bit of money. I don't have a lot of money. But it says not given to filthy lucre. I have a feeling that the filthy lucre is what a lot of people love the most in this world today is the filthy lucre. Money has never really been anything really special because I have never really been wealthy. I've been blessed. I've worked. I know what work is. Um... I've labored pretty much all my life for the last 15 or so years. I guess I've been in semi-retirement. And maybe that might be the reason of the person that I am today. But he tells us not to be given to filthy lucre. God doesn't want me to have lucre for other things. And leave him last on the plate. He wants to be first. He desires to be first. The Bible says to them that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to them it is sin. When I know to do something, and I know to do something that is right and good, and I allow lucre to get in the middle, we always want to think that lucre is just automatically money. You know, it could be possessions. It could be things that you own, things that you love, things that you put ahead of God. 
doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the the dollar bill. It could be meaning the dollar bill, but it doesn't have to just mean the dollar bill. It can mean a lot of things. There's a lot of people that have a lot of issues. And it says to don't be given to filthy lucre. But then in verse 8, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of hospitality. Being hospitable is something that sometimes I don't like to do because I'm too much self-willed. I want to do what I want to do. But see, part of my responsibility is to be hospitable. And when the Bible tells me here to be a lover of hospitality, that is saying that I need to be hospitable with the attitude of love mixed in it. There's a lot of things I don't enjoy doing, but 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 by being hospitable, you just go on and do it, and you don't really think that much about it. And that's what I probably need to do myself, is be more hospitable, be more understanding, or try to be uh, understanding, because truly, you know, God is over all things. Um, I think it was yesterday, I'm getting my days mixed up, but it was, I think, maybe Wednesday that I had went to my eye doctor, and I was driving my vehicle on the interstate, and I don't normally go but about 60 miles an hour. I have a older, higher, high mileage vehicle, and I just don't like to run it over 60 miles an hour. And, you know, I just, I'm more of a poker than anything else. As long as I'm in the slow lane, then let everybody else go where they're going and let them blow by me, but I just don't want to drive that fast. And, you know, as I'm driving, I'm thinking, as I'm going, I hope that everything works. I hope that the vehicle cranks up. I hope that I get there. I don't really like to drive in city traffic. Um, it's not so much I don't trust my driving. I just don't trust my eyesight as much as I had that I had before. And I can't trust other people. Because my reaction time might be a little slower as I get a little bit older. See, I have one eye that looks basically in one condition, and I have another eye that's sort of focused in a different position. And you just have to be careful. Well, it says here, be hospitable. Sometimes it's hard to be hospitable. When you don't really want to do something, you get sort of set in your ways. And I guess there's times that I find myself set in my ways. Now, you know, I'll go back one day and I'll listen to this message. And I will say, well, you know, what I did is I went out there and give a New Year's resolution. No, I'm just saying that I believe this would help me. And if I can admit that it would end up helping me, could it possibly be able to help someone else? Because the Bible says here, be but a lover of hospitality. You know, being hospitable is is sometimes hard to do. Especially when you got your mind on the things that you want it to be on. See, when I was driving over there to that doctor's office, I was hoping that I would make it and that I would make it home and make it home safe. And you know, I did, but I get very ill at times if things don't go my way. And it's talking about being hospitable. In everything, not just in the things that I do for other people, 
it's being hospitable to have the right kind of attitude. And that's what this is telling me here. A lover of good men. A lover of good men. I'm not talking, it's not talking about a sexual love. It's talking about a, a respect for others, for other people in general. I don't think that it's necessarily talking about just the male race. I'm thinking that it's talking about the female race as well to try to be good and try to be honest and good to, to people. You know, it's sort of like the old saying, you catch more, more, more bees with, with, with honey or something like that. You, you know, when you, when you catching something that is sweet and good, it, it draws, you know, you in the position of being willing to be good because it says a lover of good men. And then he goes on to say sober. Now, a lot of people is going to say, well, I can that word there sober means that you've got to not be drunk. Well, again, I've never had a drinking problem. I think the worst thing I ever had in my mouth at a high school uh, prom was a little shot of tequila sunrise. And it wasn't bad, but it wasn't no different than punch you would taste at a wedding. I've never touched a can of beer. I don't know what a can of beer tastes like. I never started it. I never had nothing to quit. See, there was people last night that was out there shooting off guns and shooting off fireworks and firecrackers and and literally uh, um, making the sky brighten up with all the flashing lights and, and all the fireworks and all. But you know what? When they go inside, they go inside their empty dwelling or they go inside a home that is without the Lord. But yet, they just release $50 worth of fireworks and they go inside basically empty. I don't have to worry about being empty. Do I need to do better? Do I need to be lovers of good men? Do I need to be sober? It's talking about sober in the mind. It's talking about spiritual mindedness is what it's referring to. Now, yes, it uses the word sober, but sober thinking allows me to be a better driver. Just. A just person. Do I need to be more just? Yeah. I will admit that I need to be more just, not just when I'm out here making a video. I need to be more just. I need to be more just all the time. Do I need to be holy? Do I need to see myself as being holy? Absolutely. Not holy in my righteousness, but just holy in pleasing the Lord. Whatever that uniqueness is, of pleasing the Lord. Do I want to be holy? Look at the next word. Temperate. Yeah, I need, I need temperance. The fruit of the spirit mentions the word temperance at the very end of the fruit of the spirit. In Galatians 5, 22, 23, it talks about the fruit of the spirit. I need to be temperate. That's what it says right here, being temperate. It says in verse 9, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. What have I been taught? I've been taught the scripture. I've been taught the word. Do I need to continue to do that? that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. There's gainsayers out there. 
Does he want me to try to be a testimony to all people? Yeah. Yeah. But it starts out being a steward, a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to sound by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Do I need to do that? Yeah. Yeah, I need to do that. Maybe this is a New Year's resolution. Maybe I'll remember what I read tonight and go back and study it over again. Maybe this is a good day to make a resolution to try to remind myself next time I'm in a situation, I just need to be a little more humility, humbleness. God always respects humbleness. He will continue to as well. Elderly Ministry is the website here. You have a phone number that if you go there, you can pull the tab down and get the number. Leave a message when you call. I'd be more than glad to talk with you. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Whatever you feel led to do, do. I'm looking forward to a good year. I'm looking forward to Jesus. I'm looking forward to Jesus coming very soon. I hope you are. Thank y'all for tuning in. Happy New Year.